Welcome to the Basics of Magic, of course, basicsofmagic.com, and I am Will Roberts, and of course, with my co-host, uh, which is Adam. Adam, so what's up, buddy? I'm just here in the quarantine time, excited about <laughs> our next interview. Uh, I, this is uh, this is my local magic shop that we are interviewing right now, and uh, I'm there all the time. Uh, he's probably sick of me. Uh, <laughs> being in there a lot, but it's all good because uh, this is this is literally uh, my my favorite store, so I'm super excited. Well, I have to say, you know, you say it's your local magic shop, but uh, I'm two and a half hours away on a good day in the wind going on my back and still yeah. my local magic shop as well because, yeah. you know, uh, anybody and anybody knows, and of course, I, as I said before, we have no wings they're also just on stage, so if they do anything weird, you're going to catch it, and it will go viral. But uh, Brent Garris from the Magic Apple in Studio City. Oh. Welcome to the yes. show. Yes. How are you doing? How are you doing? I just have to say before we start off that you've become the, the Instagram monster, Magic Monster. Totally. Well, I, 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 I teach some magic tricks, and I have some guests on, and show some new products and some mainly old products because a lot of the newer stuff is, you know, a little debatable, but yeah, I just like to do it and magic up live at 11. Just, uh, you know, kids are watching and kids are out of school and maybe I have a lot of family in Canada, so they're watching a lot of time. So yeah, it's cool. It's fun. Keeps me busy. Keeps you me out of the house. Really, for a little bit. You know what I really What's like, that? Brent, is I like the, um, the more adult takes on the classics that you've come out with uh, that I think are really, really clever and really fun. What I also love is that you give a platform for magicians to to uh, print their own material through you and get their own stuff out there. I think that's really, really cool. And I don't see a lot of magic shops, like a brick and mortar magic shop doing that. Yeah, no, it's fun. I mean, there's obviously living in LA, we have a, a benefit of a lot of guys who live here. That's nice. And, uh, you know, I like good products. Like, I, I, I'd like to think all the things that I've put out, whether by myself or whether with a magician, is like stuff that I'll either really do or stand behind. And, you know, we all know that there's lots of magic companies out there that are just putting out product for money. And, yes, of course, we all want to make a few bucks. But if it's just to put out money, like Sans Mind, uh, oh, it's not. Gosh, don't even, that, that's like an that is the bad word. Like I feel the magic community. Oh my god! <laughs> it also helps to be friendly with you know magicians that I respect and I, I hope that like to shop here as well. So everybody wins when there when there's good magic and good magic products. For real, everybody wins. One thing, one thing I want to I want to bring up, and I, I think uh, I want to tell you about what I think a shift in the entertainment industry, and I'll say the magic industry as well, especially for what you know you tout, which is hashtag brick and mortar, and that is is that um, I think this is awesome for you, Brent, because. You definitely are a showman, and uh, if anybody knows, by the way, you can look in the bottom of the screen and see that the Instagram information is there. The website, of course, the Magic Apple is all on there. You can see it, and you should go there and check it out. But watch Absolutely. his, yeah, watch his Instagram because it's highly entertaining. Because. I don't know what the hell he's going to do. And that's really kind of the beauty of it. But I want to say something about that. And that is, is that as we move forward because of this COVID-19 thing, and which, by the way, if anybody watches this in a year, they might go, oh, thanks for bringing me back there. But, um, you know, the point is, is that what is the next level for the brick and mortar? Well, I have to say and commend you that you've jumped in with both feet, hands, and everything and, and really created something that I believe, number one, you're sharpening up your social me media and, uh, you know, performance stuff that you're doing online uh, to a T. And now uh, maybe that's the next shift is that people will be sitting by already. We've been locked and socked into what I call hooked on iPhonics. Absolutely. But now you've I think you're on the way to creating possibly the new way of people receiving their magic and their entertainment. Thoughts? Yeah, I mean. Because I'm closed, and of course all the shops in the mall are closed. People still need to, whether it's magic or food or, you know, you still need to get out and get your mind off of, if you turn the TV on, it's 99% bad news. And, you know, we want to hear some good stuff, like, you know, that guy, John Krasinski, is doing that great news network, which is so fun. And 
he barely even talks about the pandemic. It's just cool yeah, stuff, so good, you know, yeah. focusing on the doctors and all that other stuff. So yeah, and it's, it's fun to do. One, because if I'm alone doing these Instagram videos, nobody can tell me that I'm an idiot, which is cool because <laughs> I don't have to worry. <laughs> I don't get me applause, which is fine. I don't need applause. And it's just, uh, you know, I'm glad there's a limit on Instagram because I'd have three hour shows if someone would let me. <laughs> right. And yeah, they will let you. Yeah, they uh, will let just... you, as a matter of fact. I don't think anything is stop yeah. you. It'll be interesting to see in a few months or a few weeks or a few, whenever this thing clears up where certain things will be. I think there'll be a slew of new magic coming out or maybe books because a lot of magicians like you guys have more time to maybe work on a thing you've been working on forever or write stuff down. And I know two guys that are writing books as we speak. So I think that's, I think that's a good, good reason to stay at home is to get creative, I guess. Right. Absolutely. I think it is going to bring up the creativity in a lot of magicians that are forced to stay home working with their 3D printers or writing books, as you said, or just working on techniques that they like wrote down but never had the, the time before to really hone it. And I think we're going to see a lot of really fun, cool things uh, out of the pandemic. Now, you also, Brent, have been able to uh, not only send things to people that you already have, because you have like everything in stock. Every, it feels like every time I come in there and I'm like, hey, do you have X you know, thing that like just came out? You're like, yeah, I got three in right now. Do you want it? Or it's like, yeah, I'll order it. It'll be here in two days. Do you want it sent to your door or do you want to pick it up? But we're still able to go there and pick it up through you, which I think is kind of amazing. Can you explain a little bit about both processes? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've always had an, uh, the website, but it's because there's lots of giant magic websites, it's very hard to compete. And it's not, not really worth the money for me to sit and redo my website because there's the big guys, let them handle it. And I, I love in store. I love when you guys come in and other guys come in and you want to see it and touch it and feel it. And, and yeah. I'd like to think that I tell the truth on magic, like. I don't. I do have a lot of products, and there's something for everybody. But online, if it comes broken and you like it, there's no face to the name. So, I just like to be in front of the person, in front of the, the, you know, the customer, or the magician, or whatever. And people need an excuse to get out of the house. So this curbside pickup I'm, or a parking lot pickup, why not? It gets you out of the house, get some fresh air. And I have two guys. Last week, two guys. One guy jogged here, and one guy rode his bike here, just to kind of. Kill two birds with one stone. I'll get a quick little magic trick and get some exercise. So <laughs> I'm the same way. I was stuck in my house all day. I, I would lose my mind. Um, yeah. So I get out, and whether if, if I'm coming here or just going around the block, you know, something to get out there. Absolutely. I hear you. I, I find myself sometimes just going for a drive in my car because it's a safe and secure space. But, I mean, you're able to at least see the world a little yeah. bit, you know, and, and, and things, and, grab some air. <laughs> We store downstairs. I'm friendly with the sushi guy, uh, Doug. So we talk for a second, and you know the other businesses. We all are kind of with our masks on, just talking about whatever. And yeah. it's some human interaction. You, you yeah. Know. Is I, there I, a, I took uh, my dog to the dog park just for that human interaction. Sometimes, just because we need it. You know, it's it's still six to six to eight feet away, or what have you. Whatever, but at yeah. least it's you feel like you're you are in this together, which uh, which I think is is really nice. Uh, for sure. And, you know, I, mi I it, it, it makes me really miss the days of going to the Magic Apple and seeing, you know, all you know, just the top magicians sitting around your table in there, yeah. just kind of like grabbing a deck of cards that you have from like the sample deck and just hanging out, jamming and sessioning right there inside the store saying, oh, you know, you should buy this product because it's really great. Right. Or, oh, you know, giving you advice giving young yeah. magicians advice. I think that that's so cool that that's a space that you've created um, inside your magic shop for people to be able to come in and yeah, do that. It is. Fun. And, and when some of the bigger name guys come in, it's cool when the other, like when, you know, whenever David Blaine's in town, he happens to come in and it's, although it's cool to see, I mean, it's very, you know, he's a famous magician guy. It's awesome. Yeah. But it's cool when a, a magician is like, oh my God, like that's David Blaine. Or, or when actors come in, they feel like, like, I think the last time you came in, Adam, there was a guy that recognized you and your buddy in the yeah. shop. And cool, because, like, you like magic and I like magic. Like, now you get this cool, common thing together. It's not just a guy on camera or a superstar, you know, magician over there. It's cool. Yeah, we, right. we definitely, we've talked about the fact that uh, it, the, magic is not just something that you do. It's a community. 
It's a, uh, you belong to it, and it's kind of nice because there's a language and there's a understanding about magic. Let me ask you uh, one thing that I think uh, you can definitely tout as uh, being what you do, which is you have magic for all levels. And it, because Absolutely. here we are talking about some of the famous people that come in, and I know from looking at being at your magic shop and seeing many around the world that you have some great advanced stuff that normally a lot of magician, a lot of magic shops don't have because mm -hmm. they're in like the mall or something. So the best can come there and go, oh, I can get this ring, blah, 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 or I can go over here and get a ball vase. So with that being said, I know that you have a lot of entry level stuff, but let's talk about what do you believe is the, this is a weird question, um, the gateway drug to magic where they yeah, say, that's a really good question. they say marijuana is the gateway drug to drugs. And in this case, uh, what is it for magic? I think it's, well, nowadays I think it's playing. I think there's so, I mean, there's, just so many, even if you've never done a magic trick before, playing cards are so amazing now. They've taken so much time. So a lot of the kids that are maybe newer are learning some stuff with some guys online. Right. But they want a cool deck of cards. Right. And then they, oh my gosh, there's more to magic than playing cards. So I think now playing cards are definitely where people start. But that's like the stuff you're talking about, Will, is that's the classic ball and buzz and there's, and that's, you know, all the beginner type stuff. And I don't want to call it a kid's wall or the kitty map because some of that stuff is amazing. Yes. Crazy. It's still very usable and used, and used by magicians today. This is one of the best magic tricks in the whole shop. And oh, because, it's made of, because it's made out of plastic, it maybe looks like a kid's trick, but it's oh. great. Or the rope stuff, you know, there's everybody classic rope tricks. So I think if someone's getting brand new, deck of cards because you can find card tricks on in, in simple little magic but the younger people they like the props you know they like the ball and vase and the that thing like that so i think whether it's whether they get a socially distancing magic kit or they just come by one or two that's a good way sorry uh so yeah. available on available on your website let's go over some of the information that everybody needs to know which is the magic apple uh that is 11390 ventrilla boulevard second second floor next to the place that sells weed uh at studio city of course and the hours you don't care about that right now go to, to of course the website which is the magicapple.com and check it out and on instagram what is the instagram again at magic apple store Look at that. I, I just that. fed that one that was perfect dude nice handwriting oh that's wonderful is that because of it's good so schooling cool. in canada <laughs> i said is that because your handwriting is so good is that because of good schooling in canada oh yeah exactly all the good grades i i didn't i didn't homeschool i was oh. um oh that's it that's uh, why yeah. Oh, yeah. we have the kids and like you said we have uh pro stuff like there's professional wallets adam you were just talking about and there's yeah. you know high-end books like i've got and the average you know maybe beginnerish or hobbyist doesn't want to drop like this book here is a hundred and fifty dollar book, but it's a it's right. huge. You can, so the average person isn't buying this, but there's great material in yeah. here. That's where a pro would buy it, whereas some of the beginners might buy like a Royal Road or one of like this Carl Hooves, any of those Royal stuff. Is one of the Carl best cards. Yeah. I mean, that book is great too. That I've read book that book; awesome. it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, now, Brent, I do also have to ask you. There's a lot of tricks that I know professional magicians do uh, that they have been doing since they were kids because they're literally just that good. I saw you do a Spengali deck the last time I was in the shop, and the you know that's a trick that someone even it, even a even a kid could buy eight year old ten year old whatever and do a really cool thing with it. But you're you're a professional magician. You perform at the Magic Castle. You not only run this magic shop, you get paid to perform magic. It it's amazing what you did with that deck because it just made it such a professional level trick. Yeah. Is there a trick that you have been doing or that you recommend to kids that you yourself is like, I'll never stop doing this trick uh, in an act. I think that, I mean, the Bengali deck is a, is a good example. I think it's funny. The, 
the Svengali deck, you know, they choose a playing card, then magically the whole deck changes into that card. I think that's actually the worst part about the trick, and I don't even ever do that part of it. Sure. And often, like I do, when magicians are in here, and I'm, I'm showing the Svengali deck to a kid or to a beginner, the magician will go, what's that deck of color? That's great. What is that? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't want to tell you, because if I tell you, you're not going to buy it, but because it's been around forever, but although... I, the changing the whole deck into one card is the worst part about it. Bengali deck is fantastic. I think a stripper deck is very oh. underused. Oh, I love so stripper good. decks. Um, yeah, there's, they, they are really out. Like, I love there's a magic trick called Out of This World. That is my favorite non gimmick card trick. Yeah, we talked about that last show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, In disguise as non beginner uh, is fine. I mean, Color Monty is the, you know, the $14 trick. I just found my Color Monty, and it still blows my mind because yeah. it's really great also for learning the basic sleight right. of hand with That's only right. three cards. It really is a back-to-basics kind of trick yes. because you're using such little cards. You're learning this great sleight. It's fantastic. It's forever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're only, you've got double lift and a glide, and you're off to the races with a good story. Um, yeah. we, you know, last show, uh, Adam, we talked about what trick uh, is it that you still do, and uh, you know, ever since you started. And I, I just wanted to say I remembered mine that I love still doing, which is what's next. They call it something different now, but remember what's next? You know, where you have the the different yeah. uh, things, yeah. and in the end, you've got. 10 of them i just yeah. right i just think that is such a good little like let's open up hey by the way how's it going i just love that trick because it's also no matter what version i've seen i bought another one from brent uh is is that it looks such good quality yeah I mean, it really does so it's not cardboard it's metal anyway that that was the trick is there is there a trick brent that you have when you started doing magic 100 years ago that you still may do or consider doing uh, I mean, I really like the crazy cube, that dice one, because oh, yeah. the die one, there's, I don't know, it's just open up for so many things, and there's a magician named Michael Weber who has so much work on this silly little $4 uh, magic trick, that's great. I think pen through dollar, yeah. uh, in the right situation, is amazing, oh, cool. like, I'm not going to carry a pen around to a private show, but if I'm a bartender or a waiter, it makes yeah, perfect sense awesome. to take the pen that the customer is going to sign and stick it through a bill, pull it out, and examine it. Great. And it's, again, 12 bucks. It's yeah. great. Good stuff. Um, okay. So, hey, uh, also, we gave you the information about where you can order things. Uh, you, so one of the things happening right now is, is that, and we talked about this off air, is is that uh, you are full on shipping. I mean, you are, if someone says, look, I need to have the pandemic uh, uh, prestidigitation, prestidigitation kit, whatever the hell I just said, um, you have that. <laughs> and uh, so you're shipping. You're doing it. Yeah, it's free shipping for the month of April, and it sounds like probably through the month of May. But, uh, you know, so I'm taking a bit of a hit there, but it's okay, because it's if it gets people interested in magic, and I can make a few bucks. But yeah, you can visit the magicapple.com, even if there's some things, like there's not a ton of super beginner stuff on the website. Like, right. Ball and Vaz, I don't think is on my website, but I can always get an email or send me a message on Instagram, and we can set up a PayPal. And if, if, I, if a kid or an adult is buying the social distancing magic kit, I cut some of them. So I, I will make them I'll ask some questions of the customer before I send them. Is this a five-year-old? Is this a 25-year-old? Sure. Right. I'll be customers. Are you and of course, that? of course, the, the fake puke and eyeballs and dog poop might get end up in there too, because you need to have that. Never be Because they're that. amazing. Yeah, you know, you just, you never, yeah. You never run out of You're those. never too old for a poop job. Well, yeah, uh, <laughs> unless it's pooped on you. Um, anyway, uh, what, what so I want to ask it. you is if someone says to you, hey, Brent, um, I'm kind of having a hard time with this trick. Uh, are you open and are you doing any Skype or any kind of uh, teaching? Yeah, I mean, there is there's always Zoom is not a possibility. Before everything went down, I, you know, I, I do offer private lessons here at the shop. So those people that didn't, I buy, I sell them in five packs. So people that didn't redeem all five before we shut down, I'm, I'm honoring that. I haven't really taken any new students for it because I, I feel like magic definitely is an in-person kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But yes, if someone bought 
let's pretend the stripper deck are still going and they're having trouble, I give them. I I would do some pointers for free, of course, because they sure. bought it from me. I would right. I would help somebody for a few minutes on an Instagram or a Zoom or Skype, but I don't think I'm. I don't think I want to take any new students now, just because it's a it's a little odd to learn this way. And uh, you know, in person, I can move their hands and all that and, and make them the right direction. But I did do a Zoom beginner's magic class for a group of people a couple of weeks ago, and it was okay. It's a little odd because there's no interaction. Right? I can't have you choose a playing card, so it's yeah. a little difficult. I just got to get creative with social tricks, and, and because of the things that I've been doing on Instagram Live. I do have a list of all the things that I've done. And for the most part, are just things where you don't need a spectator. But that's another great example of getting creative in this time. Everybody's got to get creative and think of tricks where you don't need something examined or looked at or a card chosen. So, so yeah, I, I'm open to definitely helping people for sure. Awesome. That's great to hear. Love that. All right, the Magic Apple, of course, Brent Garris on the second floor in Studio City. You can go there at 11390 Ventura Boulevard. And, of course, you can call them at 818-508-9921, all on the bottom of your screen. And email him at magicapplestore at gmail.com. And, of course, make sure you check out the Instagram and all of it's right there because uh, he's a riot. And also, uh, you're doing live, like, all the time now, right? <laughs> Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock, yep, and I teach Tuesdays and Thursdays on Instagram Live for free. It's all free. I have guests come on, I demo some magic, show a trick like the jumping rubber bands or the corner restore paper towel or whatever else, yes. Awesome. Love all right, it. Brent, we'll appreciate your time. We'll see you again down the road. And, of course, if anybody wants to see any of the magic or check out some of the demos that Brent has done, they're on the Spotlight Magic on Basics of Magic. Check it out, and I think you'll enjoy it. You can click through, and you can actually buy the item as well. Thanks for hanging out with us, Brent. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, talk to you All soon. All right, welcome back to the Basics of Magic. Of course, basicsofmagic.com. I'm Will Roberts, and of course, Adam Wiley, my uh, sidekick, my partner in crime. Although Ooh. we haven't created a crime yet, uh, we're looking forward to it. And I understand that the gentleman <laughs> that's waiting in the wings right now is uh, definitely someone that, Adam, you, I'm going to let you introduce him because he is the man, the myth, the legend. But go right into it and tell us who, who we're talking to. Absolutely. I'm super excited. I've known this guy uh, since we were kids, uh, since we were actors and kids. I mean, we're still actors. We've been acting for a long time. He's been acting since he was uh, young as well, as well as me. And we worked together on a set. Uh, some of my first ever magic I saw from this guy and I was blown away. The first time I ever saw somebody float in person without any rigging or anything uh, was, was from this guy. You know him as the magic crasher. That is uh, his social media persona. And um, he's just been entertaining for ever, just for a long time. And he's got millions of followers from all over social media. So this is David Bonfadini, the magic crasher. What's up, David? Crashing the What's show. up, guys? Sorry. Hey. I had to disappear for a minute. Yeah, I'm back. What is up? Thank you for having me. Basis, <laughs> basics perfect. of magic. Yeah. The number one place to start magic, the I basics. Yeah. I, I like, love, I like your, by the way, I like your Tony Stark glass look that you have. The, these are the. This is the official. Now you have the official magic crasher in front of your face right now. So that, that's it. what these are. Very awesome. The crash the glass, the glasses. Ever. Adam, bring us into this. Give us something kind of interesting uh, background. How about something that you both have worked on or have a common ground uh, other than the acting for magic? Uh huh. Well, we have a, we have a lot of common ground with a lot with a lot of magic. I mean, we started uh, before any of the, uh, any of the, the um, entertainment social media persona even started. David, we had a group called uh, Wand Wars together that uh, we used to do magic. Uh, it was a group of about five of us that we used to uh, hang out, all, do magic, all perform different types shows, of magic, perform social media stuff, shows. Yeah. We all kind of branched off into our own things from there, and we're slowly, collectively coming back together. Uh, and it's been really cool to see everybody's growth and everybody's process. And David, I want to talk about like your growth and your process personally for your entertainment brand and oh, how sure. you started uh, out with this with this whole magic crasher from from being an actor all the way through to where you are. So basically, it was um, taking the experiences of my life that I had from a young age of acting, uh, which is you know, you start a you start a brand when you're an actor. So mm -hmm. taking what I learned from there, taking what I learned in the car business, 
uh, as far as sales and, and salesmanship. You sold me my car. I did sell you your car. Yes, that was one way that we reconnected. Uh, Besides acting, was through car sales and then magic again, and um, and and I think you know for me it was all those experiences turned into what I am now. I am essentially I'm an actor. I'm a brand. I'm my own marketing team. I am um, an influencer. I am. you know, completely self-sufficient when it comes to uh, branding. And that's where the Magic Crasher came in. And and basically, you know, I started in 2012, I started uh, a YouTube channel, started putting out videos, uh, done the way that I like to see magic, and that is uh, hitting camera, real-life scenarios built into everyday situations, and then boom, there's this crazy-looking bald guy that looks like the lead singer of Smashing Pumpkins, <laughs> and he just did something. Wow. Smashing well, magic. What's Billy Corrigan doing over here? You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, right. Or Pitbull, yeah. depending on you know what you're or, wearing. Or Pitbull, yes, yes. <laughs> or my favorite lately has been um, the guy from Bird Box, which is also oh, yeah. John Malkovich. Ah. I don't get it, but I'll take it. Ah, so, I, um, or I Flea, see a little John from, or Mr. Yeah, Clean. You know. Hot, what? Flea? Or Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean, Clean yes. I, the Mr. Clean. That or magic. Howie Mandel. That's Howie, uh, Howie, Howie Mandel. Mandel. Yeah. Especially with being on TikTok. So anyway, so before all that started, um, I basically found what I like to do, and that was hitting camera magic. Then, um, as we were doing it, one of my cameramen, Brian Yu, um, one day, it was just like, I'm like, dude, what should we film today? And he's like, you know, just film what we've been filming, which is this hitting camera stuff. And he's like, uh, you know, just film it. And, you know, you're, you're the magic crasher. And I'm like, the what? And he's like, the magic crasher, like, you know you just i don't know we just go out and you just like and i'm like crash people and he's like yeah you just crash people and i was like like people that are doing things already and he's like yeah and i'm like wow and then literally it snapped and i'm like oh i'm the magic crasher i crash people's daily routines like you know we all have a nine to five and rarely does it change unless you run into me something's gonna happen and that is the magic crasher so once that started about 2015 i really started kind of like taking a a hold of this brand and start cultivating it across different platforms, IG, Instagram, um, Facebook, you know, or sorry, IG, Facebook, and uh, TikTok, or not TikTok, sorry, um, YouTube. And then from there, um, as I was growing that, uh, got into Vigo, which was a app that was actually owned by um, ByteDance, who owns TikTok now. And when I was on that program, um, we heard that it was switching over to TikTok. Well, at the time I was on Musical.ly, but didn't know that TikTok was Musical.ly. Yeah. And then when the, accusi- the acquisition happened, I went from 40,000 crown on Musical.ly to instantly 40,000 on TikTok, but a, a, um, a verified creator. So oh, I sure. skipped a step and I was like, oh, that's crazy. Well, up until this point, I had really milked every social media platform and was not growing so i get on tiktok and then tiktok starts and it's like the gold right. rush but what i started doing was taking my presence on tiktok and converting it back to youtube and back to instagram so once i started doing that i have noticed a increase of 38 percent on my um uh, on my instagram and about a 15 percent growth on my uh YouTube, both great conversion, but people love Instagram. Now what I'm realizing is people, doesn't matter what platform you're on, they want to consume TikTok content. So I I put my TikTok content on every platform now, and now that's been kind of helping. Right, That's something I learned from you, actually. Well, well, I was going to say, the next thing to transition into is what is social media magic content? Like, how do you take you know because i started as a um i was i'm a street performer i'm a busker i'm a street magician i um can step into a a crowd of twenty thousand a mic and i can i pack small and play big because that's like my hype man comes out sure that's great so how do you take that energy and convert it into a smaller screen yeah especially 15 seconds yes and try not to make things fake try to keep things genuine you know what do you do and it's the same thing when you are doing magic, when you are doing walk around and you meet people at a table, you don't know who the hell you are. Same thing when I do a video. I'm a new character. Every single 
um, every single table I went to, you know, hey, what's up? Hey, guys, uh, I'm actually not just a magician. I'm actually a doctor. And they're like, oh, really? And it's like someone at the other table just heard me say I was a clown. Like, it's <laughs> it's whatever, whoever you want to be. So I'm like, oh, you know, social media is not that much different. You no, create no. stories. You create these little entertainment um, clips. Vignette. And it's about the clip, not about you know, faking the moment or whatever. It's about the entertainment value. Uh, one right. thing I want to I want to kind of pull out is a couple of things that you said I want to kind of touch on. Number one is is that, yeah, you know, back when uh, about a year and a half or two, I used to tell people because I teach a social media for actors thing, and I would say, go to Instagram because that's what I kind of call the, uh, you know, the, the easy peasy. You can go and hit all these things by putting one post, and if you put hashtags, you put a link, it may not be good for Instagram, but it would be good on Facebook. But then I recently i've been trying to avoid tiktok like the plague or uh, a coronavirus <laughs> just because TikTok? well most people have really i mean it's changed a lot it used to be what you would go and go oh awesome i know where my 12 year old or 16 year old could go to hang out but right. now uh, kind of based upon watching adam stuff and then just sort of seeing it and then i jumped on myself and did what i did and i have to tell you immediately it took my instagram which i have like 103,000. i do pretty good on instagram but because of the TikTok, I'm noticing a lot more uh, followers. And the interesting thing is the engagement uh, percentage is so much better because they're not because it's quick. Because there's firework, there's all these other things that I have tried, and it seems as though TikTok has allowed people, along with the live element, if you're over a thousand, um, that allows you to do that. Boy, it just seems like an easy type of thing to get into. It, it really it, is, and it's it's so much fun. I don't know. I mean, uh, look at you. I, I would say, yeah. I mean, you're the newest, you yeah. know, that has has 100%. gone from a world class magician at the Magic Castle to having to transition into a new way. And do you feel like you, as a magician, has been neglect? Have you neglected your 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 background of a magician making these videos? I don't think so. I think you're more creative. I think it's made you a better performer because i've seen magic castle adam but when you do small screen adam it it it's like a nunchuck it will make or break <laughs> thanks man it, it's it's a different animal you know i will it say that animal. it's it's a learning curve along with all social media i think it's just a big learning curve tiktok for me came really naturally um i think because it is little tiny movies that yeah. are 15 seconds or less yeah. and once i actually thought of it that way in creating a, an, a, an art movie uh that's when my world kind of really opened up and uh i think my first few videos were just awful and then they just kept getting better and better and better until i kind of figured out what works for me and my own my own brand in a sense now david you do a lot of magic too that is it's all real you know there's a lot of tiktok users instagram users youtube users that 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 use camera tricks yeah. And yeah. they use a lot of things like that, but you're not one of those people. Everything that you do on a social media platform, you can do in real life and it will look identical yeah. to what you're Yeah, and, and see that see you just nailed it. Um that's the key to social media magic. Doing a trick how you would do it in real life in my in my instance, walk around or uh, street style, um, but be but have it being captured. Now, if I'm in a controlled setting I will utilize angles, but I'm not. Oh, of course. I'm not doing it to hide magic. Right. I'm not doing it to give me an edge. I'm doing it because if you were actually there, you'd be doing that with your head that's too. Right. You'd be looking that's around. So that's why right. I try to do multiple angles or have those um, cuts, those quick chop cuts to just get to the point. Because I do talk a lot. If you saw me in um, person and I did a magic trick for you, what would be a seven second 15 second magic i don't do that in real life i actually build the story sure. so when i'm cutting my videos i actually film a whole video sure. like i would a performance but i've now been able to narrow in my natural performance that 15 second sweet spot of the magic moment to the reveal to the reaction that i don't need to cut and place yeah. i can build it into my routine because now because that's how i've done that and i've seen you start adapting to that and I, I think you've been doing a great job because with you you've quickly realized what tiktok is it's not mm -hmm. just for being a magician it's 
an avenue to put out whatever you want that's going to be creative. One totally. one thing I want to say about that is is that you know uh, I when I I produce a lot of videos and I'm kind of specialized in smartphone production. You should see the lenses I've got DSLR lenses and all these different rigs and so on. And a friend of mine over at NBC, I was doing the America's Got Talent promo for the last season. I did fire ropes because I'm a trick roper, but I also did some card stuff because he wanted a mix of it. And mm. when we got done doing it, he goes, "Will I want to take you to lunch and talk to you about something?" I go, "Okay." So he's He's like the guy that does all the promos for them. And he said, what you're doing with your videos, and just so you know, it's the same thing that you're talking about, David, which mm -hmm. is I take my videos, a lot of my stuff on social media, and I will chop out spaces. And yeah. it will go, ba -ba -da, uh, ba -ba -da, ba -ba -ba, and I'll do this, and I'll use it for one comedy dynamics going like this and not waiting to go uh, la, la, because yeah. everybody is interested in the uh, nat second of everything, and I noticed on most social media, especially TikTok and the Instagram, that the 15 five second things like I posted something an hour ago, uh, the thing before it two hours ago got a hundred, and this one got 700 because it was shorter. And I was right. doing a fan, I was doing a whatever, and a blah blah, and I was like, Here I'm done. And I did a butterfly knife, and it was shorter, it got more. So the guy at NBC said. What you're doing with your videos is what they're now sending us and training us on promos. And I say, you know, it's hooked on iPhonics. People yep, are like, want, want to get to it and get it done because they got other stuff to do. And 100%. they don't want to listen. A lot of like, times they they'll turn it off. something they can send to their friends going, oh, look, 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 look. You yeah. have to see this. And, right. and two when, seconds. Look, 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 look. Yeah, one thing I've been having, uh, one thing I had to teach uh, you, which you got right away, Adam, but I think this is the biggest thing. In it, in magic, okay, I'm going to do a card trick right okay. now, right? You pick a card, you memorize the card. Okay. Okay, Ace of Diamonds, right? You memorize the card. I want you to remember that card. I'm going to place it back into the deck. Excellent. You got it? Keep yeah. it in your mind. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. That's great. That's my pre-work because that's not shit is not going to fly on social media. No. Absolutely. But legitimately, you picked a old. card and now the reveal is what my uh, Rachel is my girlfriend. She's my camera uh, woman and my videographer and my creative. And we'll just be I'll I'll get it. We, we film this whole process. But then I get to my person. I put down the deck. I pretend like we're getting ready to film, but she's been filming everything. And I'm like, all right, just stand here. You ready? Okay, cool. And I'm like, Joe, you have a card in your mind, right? Joe, Joe, keep that mind in your card. You got that card? Yes. Now keep focusing on that card. If you can start drawing that card in your mind, keep drawing. You know what? You don't need to see that I forced the card. Who gives a shit? What you want to see is what's about to happen. So that's, that's the key. Adam was like, um, you know, how can he was sending me videos and I was sending them back. And he's like, oh, you cut out that whole part. I'm like, yeah, because honestly, you don't need it. And he's like, yeah, I don't. Damn. Yeah. Like, don't worry, your mind will start it's to so realize. Smart, well, then, but see, that's the problem a lot of times with magicians is they're stuck on their ego. And Over they're saying, oh, wait a second, but you should see the way I fan it or cut it. No one really cares. No one cares. I mean, unless you no, want I need to, to light it as a I need to show transition. the classic force because yeah. the magicians will, will be mind blown. Guess what? Magicians aren't following your shit because they're, because they're jealous. Oh. So there you go. So, okay. So what, gonna say, well, I did. Look what okay. I, did. I want to tell you, I want to tell you another issue that there is with Instagram or uh, I'll just say social media magic. And I call it the yeah. crotch magic. And that oh. is where you see a lot of magicians doing this. Oh, the angle. Yeah. And that's oh, all yeah. they do. And you're like, and they go, boom, and you're like, so thanks for the patter and thanks for the entertainment. And okay, you can do a uh, you know a double lift or a Elms account. The point is that a lot of times you see a lot of these kids that do cardistry, and they're doing stuff, and you go, that's awesome. But one, they don't get anywhere. There's no trick. Yeah. There's no entertainment value. And a lot of people nowadays on on social media magic, it's digital diarrhea. Talk. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> Um, I totally agree. Here, here's the best part. Going back to vaudeville, okay? You know what would kill on a TikTok or a quick social media video? Something stupid like this. Yeah, right. Yeah, I know. 
And they cut it. it. They, dude, I don't even have to say a word. I don't that's even have to do yeah, anything. Right. Just to visual, the animation, yeah. that's yeah. it. Yeah. But you know what that you know what takes that? That's not magic. That's not sleight of hand. That's being an actor. That's being a performer. That's, being a performer. that's yeah. why we are actors. Right. When somebody says, "Oh yeah, uh, the magic crasher is a magician," I go, "I now have branded out of being a magician." Even though magic is in the name, it doesn't matter. Magic can be interpreted any way you want, and the crashing can be interpreted. But at the bottom, the bottom line is, I'm a personality. I'm an entertainer. That's what I had that's to key. teach Adam. Was Adam. Doing it right on social media, you can be a magician, you can be a um, equity actor, you can be a um, uh, a long life uh, television actor, a movie actor, you can be a comedian, you can be a sketch artist. You just need to brand it all together. Mm -hmm. And now he's like, "Dude, I'm being seen more as an entertainer." I said, "Boom, yeah. that's what you yeah. want." Well, you know, um, back in the '80s. Uh, uh, back in the 80s when I was in Central California working at Zucchini Tricks and Things, one of the things I decided to do as an actor and, uh, and entertainer, because I'm a balloon artist, trick roper, all this other stuff, magician, is I literally got four different places, El Chiritos, um, Applebee's, um, uh, all these Best different places. places. And I said to them, look, and I was poor as hell. And I said, look, I just want to do balloons and magic strolling at the tables. And I go, give me 50 bucks and a meal. And I'll do the rest. Well, as you all know, I was up by Pier 39, all that stuff, is that I got, uh, eventually I started getting and uh, making about 350 bucks a night and doing four nights a week. And the way I did, people go, how are you doing this? I went, because I realized that I was not making fun of the dad at the table. I was making fun with the dad. And I would do the balloons and I'd do the jokes and do all the different things. And I'd walk away with $20 tips. The reality is, is that I was more entertaining than I was doing something where I'd go here, hold on to this and do that, and put your finger on that and do that. Look at Shane, blah, 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 blah. No one cares. It's no one about the cares. entertainment exactly. part. No one cares. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm eating. That's like, right. Yeah. Yeah. You learn to cut That's your. That's the entire you learn, thing. The restaurant magic. Yeah. Leave me alone. I'm eating. But you learn to cut your uh, teeth on improv and knowing when to and when to walk away from that person. And who to pick and how to do that. So uh, I, I love the fact that it sounds like what you're doing with the Instagram magic. So moving forward, we have a segment, don't we, Adam? Absolutely. We have a segment. We're going to talk every week with David and uh, the and the magic crasher uh, personality, as well as David Bonfini, the all-encompassing entertainer. And we're going to talk about social media magic, how to build your own brand, how to build yourself on social media, how to stay creative and all of that stuff. And speaking of creations and, and creative things, David, you're not only a creator of content, but you're yes. also a creator of uh, magic props and such. Um, yeah. You invented so, this, this, uh, this magic trick prank that is just so <laughs> flipping cool. Can you talk a little bit about okay, the, here, the magic I, prank marker and sharpness? But hey, David, yeah, okay, I, David, before yes. you do, can you give us Instagram uh, Twitter and and you have a web website. Tell us anything we can. Absolutely. I'll put it on the third. Absolutely, it is the Magic Crasher on Instagram, the Magic Crasher on YouTube, the Magic Crasher on um, Twitter, and www.themagiccrasher.com and the Magic Crasher on TikTok and the Magic Crasher on TikTok. You're a branding <laughs> monster. Every, every single thing, I try to stay consistent. That's the biggest thing that I learned. Uh, but Sharp This is actually really a funny story. Because like you, I was also poor. And um, I was in a relationship. And it came down to you need to figure out how to make money. Quit messing around with these videos. And I'm like, well, you obviously aren't seeing what I'm doing. But okay. So I came up with this trick. And ended up selling it to the magic community and uh, oh, made a so nice good. little chunk of change. And that kind of like helped me propel to the next level. And then shortly after that, I got sent to the X Games um, where I got to go on uh, ESPN and do magic for millions. So that was and really you're cool. Also a skater and as well yourself, so. yeah, yeah. And I grew up with skaters. So it was like, again, it was taking everything I knew and merging it, um, but leveraging everything that I was creating with everybody that I knew. So knowing and and creating your own stuff, that was, that was my leverage. So then this guy comes about, 
Uh, let's get stuck right there. And then, uh, and then watch. <coughs> and just put it right back on like David Blaine, ladies and gentlemen. I have a regurgitation. Thank you. Oh, here. Oh, uh, let me oh, just go no. and wipe that off. <laughs> um, it's so, so good. I love it. It's so good. It's so stupid. But then fast forward to November 14th. 2019, I was sitting at 105,000 on um, TikTok right. at 5.26 p.m. I posted a video of me doing this on my friend's jeans and don't know what happened, but next thing you know, I um, have a video with 12 million views in an hour on TikTok, wow. and I went from 105 <laughs> in an hour. I went from 105 followers, 105,000 followers to um, 602,000 in like an hour. And, and now you're over a million and a half. What did you do? No. What did you do to get that? He, I, he did a sharpie. He did this. Watch. Here, see. Speaking of crotch magic. Yeah. Yeah. Here's some crotch magic. I only watch successful. Right By the way, I only watch successful crotches. Okay, so here's success, successful crash magic. I just went to her and I drew a line and then made it vanish. Oh, that's awesome. That's so, so awesome. Yes. So good. Dude, there you go. I love that. So, I, I just, I, 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 off, off the air, I want to say something to you. But, uh, oh, look. And it's funny. a real tip. Yes, it that's is. That's the best tip. part. That is awesome. And it smells like it and everything. I have a friend who sniffs. Um, I won't get into that. Uh, but I will tell you that <laughs> I... friend is me. Yeah, I am. Uh, I have a friend who sits in and does that. And anyway, he looks like you do. It's, so, ba Joey it's so bad now. My yeah, girlfriend's always doing this. Okay, that's the real one. Like, I have so many of these fake Sharpies. <laughs> that's funny. Hey, it's FYI. So FYI, yes. I have to tell you, David, that I grew up in Santa Cruz, and I was the guy that was emptying out the pool. Alva, Dogtown Skates, I was dropping in pools, so that's what I did oh, my, okay. whole, so, my whole yeah. teenage years. That and so, smoking weed, so it's all good. Uh, <laughs> it goes hand in hand. I was a skater, apple, dude. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree over here, my friend. Yeah, um, I was a skater, bro. Uh, and I, actually, yeah, that, that's I, the interesting thing. is That's that my I, heart. Yeah, I started off as a skater, and then I had, like, a Yamaha jacket. I was all torn up because, all my, you know, you, whatever. I didn't really wear pads. But we were dropping. I had a quarter pipe that we had in our garage that went down. But I yeah. remember uh, I walked into the magic shop at uh, in, San, in um, Monterey and Cannery Row, and the guy's like, wow, dude. And I go, yeah, I kind of want to learn some magic. And he goes, okay. Well, I was a total – skater and i went from skater to magician so you know it's yeah, saved, it saved my life that, that's funny. Skateboard. My life. you know yeah. he's got that yeah. um and also uh i i have a lot of deep roots in, in skateboarding as well i grew mm -hmm. up with a half pipe in my backyard mm -hmm. uh i of course did rob deerdick's movie street dreams where i was nice. a filmer crew with a bunch of bunch of pro skaters with like a Ryan Sheckler and Terry Kennedy and that, that, that I literally Paul like Rodriguez. I literally hang out with these people that he's talking about like on a yeah. daily basis That's still, cool. which awesome. is crazy. <laughs> yeah, all the guys I know are dead or in prison. <laughs> well, actually, it was funny because <laughs> um, after after X Games, it really like I really yes, I did have a lot of the big players of X Games. They already knew me as. Uh, personal, but then once they saw what I did with my brand and everything on ESPN, um, Pal Peralta started following me, like wow. their their Instagram and like all these really Dude. big um, Sector Nine nice. spy sunglasses. Nice. Now um, the Barracks follows me. I was at the Barracks. Just like it, it's just crazy to see, like you know, if you stay true to your roots yeah. and you take your passion and you find a way to melt the two. Yeah. You'll never be poor and you'll never be jobless in your life. Right. Period. Absolutely. And Might you know be hungry, what? but <laughs> Yeah, but you know what interesting thing is is that we're talking about right now being in this pandemic and all the different stuff and you know, I a lot of my actor friends and I've told Adam about this as well, is is that they call me up and they're like, What do I do? 
I go, what do you mean? They go, I'm so depressed. I'm like, okay, what are you, what are you doing? I go, I don't know. I just want to sit home and eat ice cream. And they go, what are you doing? I'm like, I've submitted to uh, 30 voiceover auditions and I've self-taped a bunch and I'm starting a magic site and I blah, blah, blah. And they're like, damn, really? I go, yeah, because when it's over, I want to be in the front of the line, not, not the back. 100%. That's what I'm talking about. You know? And it's funny because like Adam, same thing. Adam was like... Um, it, it, like, in all honesty, I have to say, Adam, the smartest career move that you will make or that you have made, made um, with your acting to save your acts, to save your years and years of acting, your mom going to L.A., every story that you can think of to preserve that, to keep your legacy going. The smartest thing you could have ever done was join TikTok because wow. it's the only thing moving right now. And then what you're doing as far as building your other um, platform, it's the smartest thing because once you have something that blows you up, because you even said you were like, hey, I'm doing this not for really magic. I'm doing this for me Branding. because I'm tired of going into these auditions and not booking because I don't have 10,000 followers on exactly. anything. And I'm like, yeah. excuse my friend, but I said, I got you. This is, is what I'm French? talking about. Is that French? Yeah, it is. By the way, I just had a notification come in from the Academy of Magical Arts as we're on. Me too. So who knows I what's just, happening? Just yeah. saw that. Just popped up. You know, <laughs> really? It, you know, in in really, in all fairness, and we'll close the show out on this because our time frame is up, and I don't want to go too far over. But please, um, I will say that you know this is great little mix that we have here because something is very important. And I, as I was telling you about the actors telling me about how they're wallowing in their ice cream. And, and, and I'm uh, 55, uh, they all are saying to me, wow, I mean, like, this is amazing. How, why are you and how are you doing all this? And I'm like, I learned a long time ago that uh, here's the important thing you have to remember. If you need someone to shoot your stuff, edit your stuff, do a voiceover, need a green screen place, or market mm. you on any of these different places, all those things, by the way, cost you money. And if you are 100%. an actor you really don't have anything in that palm. <laughs> so you better know how to do that because now more than ever, we're sitting in what we're doing and we don't know how long we're going to be here. I got news for you. If you can't create your own ark and feed your animals and be the vet for those animals, your ark ain't going anywhere. And also, though, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. It takes a yes, lot of time. You have to rely on other people's yeah. time and you lose to do those creativity. things for you. And you lose yeah. creativity. So yeah. You, you just, the, the biggest success to where I'm at now, and you probably can um, second this as well, is when I started making, uh, when I started doing the videos in 2012, I had the ideas. I was the actor. I was the magician. I had the ideas. I didn't understand a camera. You know how to turn on a freaking DSLR. You know how to switch lenses. Nothing. But everyone that was on my crew, I learned. And now... Rachel's on my crew, but that's because we live together. But I've taught her everything I know. She's self-sufficient for her own creating. But the thing is, is all that, I was paying for um, a crew to handle all that when I was getting paid by Penguin. Now, Penguin doesn't pay me, so I had to learn every single position. Now, I edit, I shoot, I set green screen, I do it all. And then there's people that come in and go, hey, I'm... I really want to start editing. I'm like, cool, I got some. Here's a project. Do it. And they're more than willing to do it for free. And the thing is, is I don't need to rely on them because if they can't do it, I've probably already edited it. Right. I'm just giving them a shot. Absolutely. And you know, a lot you of You have times, to be self-sufficient. You really have to be self-sufficient. And I'm saying that because of what's happening right now in our society with this whole COVID-19 thing is that when we wake up tomorrow, whenever that tomorrow is that we come out of our bunkers, um, I have news for everybody in the entertainment industry. If you can't do all this, I can tell you right now, you're it's over. Be, yeah, it's over because most actors in general can't afford to pay attention. And so when that, when it all comes down to it, I'm getting audition notices that are saying, can you uh, self-tape and can you produce it yourself? You're damn straight I can. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, it's so funny. I've been, um, I got a TV show because uh, their whole format is taking clips from my, from my uh, YouTube right. and they're just licensing them and they're putting it in a format with the voiceover. Mm -hmm. They asked me, they said, 
we'll pay you X amount. And it's, it's a really nice payday for all I had to do was do five, produce five um, intros, outros that they wrote for me. Wow. And they were like, they were like, uh, can you get this done in a week? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, 15 minutes later, I yeah, sent right. it all to them <laughs> with mics and everything. And they were like, damn. And I'm like, just let me know if I need to redo it. And they're like, actually, we didn't know you were so fast. Do you want to make more money? And I was like, oh, yes. Yeah. They're like, here's more. And I was like, <laughs> cool. Up. And because for us, like, can you produce that shit? I do it every day. Absolutely. Oh, there it is. Uh, Adam's got the money. Hey, Adam, bring us out of here. We have to end the show. Basicsofmagic.com. I pitch it to you, my friend. And thanks, David, by the way. We'll see you next week. Hey, guys, thanks for having me. And honestly, the, I wouldn't be here if I did not learn magic, basic magic tricks. That's Absolutely. what started it. Basic magic to earn basic money. Basicsofmagic.com. We'll talk about that later. Basicsofmagic.com. Super excited that you guys are here. This is me, Will Roberts, I'm Adam Wiley, and of course, our special guest on our new weekly segment to teach you everything you need to know about the basics of social media magic and beyond, to be an entertainer, Whoa. build your brand, the magic crasher, David Bonfadini. Look at that. Crazy. We'll see you next week, everybody. Make sure you check Thanks, out the site, guys. the Instagram. Of course, we're going to create a TikTok soon on this thing. But if you need anything, let us know. And all by all means, make sure you don't tell the secret. And if you do, get out of town because we'll hunt you down. We'll see you next week. <laughs>